Hello everyone. Welcome again to A Ticket to Christ. Um, today we're continuing with our series of uh, remaining alert, spiritually alert, um, in these last days or end times. Um, we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 through, uh, I guess, 7. The passage goes on, and uh, but I don't want this session to be too long, so I'm just going to read to set to seven, but you can read on through um, the rest of the passage on your own. It says, If there be therefore any cons consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Thought it, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And of course, the passage goes on to say, um, uh, gave some more teachings about how to, you know, have the right attitude and more instruction. So it's really good. Um, to read this passage because it gives some real practicals for what to examine in your in your life and doing trying to remain spiritually alert um, everybody is different for me I always need uh, just a strong reminder <laughs> I, I'm um, someone who it can't be too, it has to be a revelation through the word it has to be uh clear and straight from the word it can't be puffy and loosey-goosey in terms of getting direction because uh that that just doesn't inspire me it doesn't work kind of bounces off so it needs to be something that from the word of god cuts to the heart and the neat thing about the word of God and the revelation of God it brings you to a godly sorrow it doesn't make you feel beaten up or put down it's not coming from a place where somebody is putting you down or making you feel lower than it's rather coming from a place whereby after the spirit convicts you and you repent you're refreshed and so you're not left feeling um uh that you know like when somebody is talking to you and they're putting you down um, but they're coming from a bad place that's not what the word of god does uh the word of god and the revelation of god uh strengthens your faith and it convicts you it doesn't condemn you so um that uh is really the mindset when coming to these types of scriptures um, to have just looking for okay what stands out for me what is it that my mind is just drawn to and usually I heard someone say this and I found it to be true usually when you read a passage the thing that your mind is drawn to that's the thing God wants you to focus on so for me, when I read this passage, I was drawn to let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And the reason being, it's uh, usually, you know, when interacting, say, on my job or with people, in the world, I always have to remember to keep a mindset uh, that is not going to be sucked into strife or vanity. 
And I had an incident actually the other day at work whereby, you know, I was tempted to, to, to think, uh, or I found myself starting to, to, to in my mind say, oh, well, I'm going to show them because this girl was very nasty to me. I'm going to show them by, you know, just being so excellent in what I do. And, you know, that's just going to show her that I'm not bothered or whatever. But um, the motive wasn't pure I in reflection. And I, I feel like God led me through this passage to show me, wait a minute, that's not the motive for what you do. It shouldn't be to show anyone anything or show anybody up. It should be, you know, remember, you know, to keep your mind set on me. Remember to not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Because it's very easy to, when somebody's being nasty, to start thinking, well, they're the problem. But what I've been learning is, yeah, they might be the problem, but it's a good opportunity for me to really grow in my own humility in being kind and showing mercy and compassion and in developing the attitude and conduct of Jesus Christ. Because it's showing us the attitude and conduct Jesus had toward us. So while we were still sinners, while we were still uh, disobedient to God and rebellious, God came on this planet through Christ and had an attitude of humility, meekness, and servitude. And uh, Jesus uh, was uh, wise and strong. He wasn't a weak man, but uh, he, God, there is no pride at all in God. God is pure light. There is nothing, not even a hint of any kind of a darkness or ego in God. And so to walk in fellowship with God, we can't carry any kind of an ego, pride, um, vain imaginings, uh, self-narcissistic tendencies, or focus on me, 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 me. And so this passage really, I think, ministers and helps with focusing on the attitude, the internal attitude that we carry in our walk with Christ. A lot of times it's not so much what we do, but the attitude behind it, the internal workings of our imaginations, what, how we think, how we view others. Sometimes we're able to, to when we've learned this, through socializing, how to react and respond in the right way, but inside ha seething or inside having a resistance or, um, and these can show themselves in subtle ways. And so really bringing our lives before God and asking the Lord, Father, internally, when you look at my internal workings, when you look at how I view people, life from what you see me think on and focus on, is my life pleasing to you? Is, uh, is there anything inside of me, in the internal workings of my being, that you're not pleased with, that is not in unity with who you are? Please reveal it to me, Father, and bring me to repentance. That's what you need to pray and say, in my opinion, um, in order to really flesh that out from inside, um, because a lot of times we can be, in, we can flatter our own selves, you know, it's very hard to see yourself, and so taking nothing for granted, just as we talked about in Matthew 25, the foolish virgins made assumptions, you know, assumptions that um, made them make very poor choices and bad decisions in their walk. Turned out they never knew the bridegroom or the bridegroom never knew knew them, it, you know, so they wasted their entire lives um, go, going after this bridegroom that never knew them because they didn't um, approach their relationship with him in a way to be known. And so I do hope that this gives you some things to think about and that you can take that in your own Bible study and uh, find out from God what he wants to reveal 
to you from this passage as well. Beloved, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.